So hello and welcome, MicroPunter here. I am in the educational supplies room of uh, my school. And what I want to do today is I want to show you how to use a stereo microscope. Um, and specifically, I want to look um, at snake skin um, under the stereo microscope. Um, as a matter of fact, here I have a student several years ago found some uh, snake skin in the forest um, and brought it along to school and I would like to look at this uh, today. Well, um, if you're lucky enough, uh, then you can find snake skin like this um, in the forest because snakes, when they grow and uh, their skin becomes a little bit too tight, and then they shed off uh, the skin. Um, and uh, occasionally, uh, if you're lucky enough, you can find this. Um, and uh, uh, as I mentioned already a few years ago, a student uh, of ours uh, found this in the forest. It's a pretty complete one. It's a pretty complete snake skin. Um, and uh, it took it along. It's pretty fragile. It feels a little bit like paper. Um, and I think it's going to make an interesting specimen uh, to look under the microscope. Um, we also have in our collection uh, professionally prepared uh, snake leather, um, which looks like this, uh, and uh, it's pretty dry uh, and uh, fra it's also fragile, but not very flexible. So um, it's going to be a little bit difficult to put this one under the microscope because I have to kind of bend it straight. So I have to be careful that I don't uh, break it. Yeah, it's kind of rolled up like this, uh, and uh, we use this as a demonstration object uh, for our students. We also have a whole bunch of um, other prepared uh, samples. So, so this snake here is a real one, um, at least uh, looks pretty real. Uh, and uh, I'm now taking out uh, one of the stereo microscopes uh, that we use. Um, it's a pretty good stereo microscope, uh, even with a zoom function. Not so many stereo microscopes have that. And uh, I just want to use this one and uh, I want to have a look um, under the microscope uh, now. So what I have here is a stereo microscope with a zoom uh, function. Um, it's able to magnify from uh, seven times all the way up uh, to 45 times. Um, so this is actually a quite a, a very good uh, microscope. Now some of you might wonder why uh, we actually use uh, so many advanced, uh, these advanced microscopes also for educational purposes. And one of the reasons is that we feel that uh, it's important that children and uh, young students um, that they get a very good visual impression of the things that they see because they might not be uh, looking through a stereo microscope for, for many more years uh, to come. And therefore, I think it's important that they get a very good uh, and, and a very immersive uh, impression. Now, uh, what I will be doing now is I will be placing uh, this uh, snake uh, leather, snake skin, under the microscope and also the one that I have here that I showed you before. Okay, um, and then I will uh, connect uh, my uh, small pocket camera to uh, the uh, microscope here so that I can also show you um, some of the pictures and some videos uh, that I can make this way. So I have not placed uh, the object um, on the stage. Um, I'm adjusting to the lowest magnification here and I'm now using the focus knob uh, to uh, get a sharp image. Um, if um, I'm not able to focus all the way because I'm, I happened to um, already, let's say that it's a very large specimen and let's say that I'm not able to continue to turn the focus because I'm already at the top. In this case, I have to loosen the screw here in the back and I have to raise uh, uh, the whole microscope up, okay? Um, but this is luckily not the case. Uh, so I can actually now uh, get a clear picture um, with the current with the current um, height setting here. There is of course also a main switch here on the back. I did not uh, show this to you yet, and I have uh, two. Um, uh, knobs here that I can turn. Uh, one is regulating the light uh, from the top. There is a lamp uh, right here, okay? Um, and the other one is uh, regulating the light uh, from the bottom. And of course, um, I get two very different uh, visual impressions this way, okay? Um, and uh, what we have to do is, is, of course, we have to choose uh, the setting that is most appropriate. Well, everything's uh, now set up uh, and uh, basically I'm getting now a live image uh, using so-called afocal photography. This means that uh, it's the taking of a picture directly through the eyepiece uh, of a microscope. Yeah, that is basically, uh, that's what I see. That's now the snake leather. Um, it looks uh, 
uh, quite uh, magnified. Uh, you can see the individual scales um, of uh, the snake. Um, yeah, it, uh, that's basically um, what I see. And uh, now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm just going to look for an interesting um, uh, place, an interesting uh, location, um, something that I would magnify, would like to magnify even further. And now I'm zooming in. And as I zoom in, I'm kind of losing the focus a little bit, and I have to refocus. Yeah. So um, you can also see that the image is uh, getting darker a little bit because uh, there is, of course, also uh, less light available. The more um, I focus, the more I zoom in, of course. Yeah. And now I'm zooming out again. Yeah, so you can see that uh, mostly it stays in focus when I zoom, it's, uh, but uh, I might have to do some adjustments. I'm now turning on the light from below and you can see that the characteristics um, of the appearance uh, change quite dramatically. Now you can see that uh, the individual scales are maybe not so visible anymore as they used to be, but now other structures start to appear. I'm zooming in again and I'm now able to see um, yeah, a little bit uh, through the snake ladder and I can see now some structures that are deeper down inside. But I think uh, for most cases I would like to simply use the so-called top illumination um, to see the surface uh, texture a little bit. Yeah, so that is basically, I've switched it off again and now I'm turning on again the top light. And that's how it looks like. Yeah, and here I'm simply uh, making adjustments uh, to the camera and I'm using now the screen of the camera um, to do microscopy. So I'm getting a live image as well. And yeah, so that's a, a photograph. And uh, that is another different, uh, a different location of the snake, uh, snake leather. And that's a photograph uh, using the bottom illumination. So I, I now want to have a closer look uh, at uh, the other snake skin. I, just like before, I simply place it on the stage and have a look. One of the advantages of having a screen um, on the camera is, is that you can use the screen directly to do microscopy and to observe the specimen. The disadvantage is, is that in my case I have to take my glasses off because I've already got some eye problems and I'm not able to focus at that close of a distance. Often it's however better to place the specimen directly on a petri dish um, because it's uh, much easier to move uh, the specimen around uh, if you have it in a dish and uh, this way you also don't have to touch it because some specimens are rather delicate and it's uh, not very good if you touch them with your fingers. Um, all because there might be some grease on, on the specimen or also in other cases it might be like this that I mean, sometimes um, they're dirty and uh, you do not want to really uh, get any bacteria or any other infective material, infectious material um, transferred on your skin. So actually petri dishes like this are highly recommended. It should go without saying that you should probably not work with infectious materials in the first place. Uh, so make sure that all of the specimens that you look at are completely dry and are not decaying. Yeah and that is basically again uh, the picture that I see, uh, the live image that I see and now I'm actually zooming in and now I'm refocusing and you can see that uh, this is a very practical way of also doing microscopy. Um, the adapter that um, I bought uh, is uh, basically uh, quite uh, easily, yeah, it's a very straightforward and simple design and allows um, to connect uh, many different types uh, of uh, small pocket cameras. Yeah, so that's basically now the thin snake skin which was found in the forest and you can see that uh, the characteristics are again quite different compared to the other one. Um, I have to admit, not the most exciting type of specimen, there's not a lot of movement going on. Probably water samples are a little bit more exciting because you actually see um, all of the paramecia and all of the water organisms move around. This is a rather static uh, specimen, but still, yeah, it's uh, still interesting to have a look. So that's uh, the bottom light and now again I'm at, at the top light. And again, a photograph. 
One of the things that I can unfortunately not show you is the immersive three-dimensional um, impression that uh, you get when looking through a stereo microscope. Um, the two eyes receive a different image because there are two objectives down here, uh, one for the left and one for the right eye, and therefore you actually get a real feeling of depth. Uh, and this is something that of course a camera um, is not able to capture. And uh, this is also one of the big advantages of, of stereo microscope over the conventional um, upright compound microscope. Uh, that is uh, simply that, that uh, you get, especially for children, you get a much more immersive experience. Okay, so for today, um, that was basically it. I simply wanted to show you how to use uh, those uh, stereo microscopes. They're relatively easy to use, um, as you have seen. Um, sample preparation generally is not uh, necessary. You simply take the object that you want to look at and put it directly under the microscope. And for this reason, uh, it's very suitable um, as an introductory for as introductory microscopes. In any case, I wish you a nice day and happy microbe hunting as always. And uh, bye bye.